What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here today. Oh, hold on a second. Let me check the content creator. Oh, yep. All right. The video of the week is we're all reacting to Jeff Wilson's sports cards at the bottom video. I mean, I had some other stuff on the docket. I don't have a choice. It's reaction video. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'll fall in line. I, I mean, like I said, I had other things planned for this week, but if this is what we're doing this week, then, you know, okay. All right, I'll fall in line. I don't want to break the break the rules of the sports card creator content code here. Um, jokes aside, folks, uh, we're going to talk about the SCI video. A little, little tongue-in-cheek there at the beginning. Uh, you know, the, the sports card content, and this probably isn't limited to sports cards. This is just... A, anything the content creator space is it's it's a fun game it's a fun game if i make this if i don't make this video i'll get a bunch of questions hey what do you think about sports card investor video do you think we're really at the bottom how come you're not talking about it and, and you could replace this topic with literally anything uh, anything semi-controversial i should say good bad or indifferent you know how come you're not talking about x thing that is happening whatever it is and then also, all right, well, I guess I should talk about that thing. And I respect, like, people want each individual content creator they follow, they want their take on it. And, I, you know, that's, I appreciate that. I, the, the fact that you all want to know what I have to say about something is still crazy to me all these years doing this, but it is what it is. And then the flip side of it will be you, you'll you do a video like this, and in the, in the comments down below, it'll be like, oh, I see we're just all paired in this video this week. Oh. Can't come up with no original content. Oh, I see no one can think of something up on their own. We're just all doing this thing this week. So you're, it's a damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. So here we sit today. The hot button topic of the week. Has the sports card market hit the bottom? Jeff Wilson, polarizing figure that he is on the old social space. Full disclosure, I am a Mark Weaver's affiliate. I have been for years. So just putting that out there right now. I've, 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 I have liked and used Margaret Movers since, I don't even remember, the summer of 2020 probably, fall of 2020, somewhere in that area. I've been using Margaret Movers since the channel started. So let's chat about this. Have we hit the bottom in sports cards? Honestly, no one freaking knows. We have no idea. No one knows. If we had crystal balls that could tell us if we hit the bottom of something or if something's going to go up or if something's going to go down, I sure as hell wouldn't be making YouTube videos about it. I'd be buying lottery tickets or betting on sports or going and buy stuff that's going to go to the moon because my crystal ball, my magic eight ball says it's going to go to the moon. All we're doing, looking at the data, analyzing it the best that we can in a non-professional approach, not financial advice, hashtag. And... Just trying to figure this whole thing out together. Sometimes we make good calls. Sometimes we make bad calls. But on the topic of has things actually hit the bottom? My personal opinion? Eh, I don't think so quite yet. Do I think we're getting close? Maybe on some cards. And I get like... Jeff's point on this, on, you know, things resetting to pre-2020 prices, because I've, I've, I've had the same thoughts. In fact, uh, you know, Dakota and I, Sports Cards Anonymous, had the very discussion about this uh, regarding Patrick Mahomes rookie cards on the Saturday video. I think that went up when we recapped the football market. And we had talked about, like, the floor would probably be whatever it sold for in 2020. I've talked about this a lot on the comic book side. Uh, a lot of key issues that I've been looking for. And when I when I say key issues, think like for those that aren't involved in comic books. Think uh, vintage sports cards like a, a, a not necessarily a Jim Brown rookie, but like a Jordan, um, a Nolan Ryan. That sort of stuff. Silver Age keys are from the 60s, 70s. Key books that are key first appearances. They would be equivalent to some later vintage uh, sports cards. I have been using pre comic book boom pricing as floor targets. When I see something that I want start to approach those numbers, I start getting intrigued, start putting more things on watch lists, start watching more 
eBay auctions for those particular books if they're on a list of things that I want. And I, we on the comic book side, we are seeing things start to creep towards that. Now, some things have busted through, and I think some things will bust through on sports cards. Now, the examples that Jeff gave here were like your Jordans, your LeBrons, your Currys, that sort of stuff that have very established markets, very established legacies, regardless of what happens with the rest of their careers. They could retire tomorrow and nothing's going to uh, that will not really affect their card prices. You know, Tom Brady could hang it up at the end of the year. LeBron could hang it up at the end of the year. Curry could hang it up at the end of the year and it would have minimal impact on their prices in the long run. Their story is written. So I get the concept of wanting to use 2020 prices for that. The big unknown that we don't know, and this is the looming specter that hangs over all this, and quite frankly, will really probably determine how this all goes. Things are never going to get back to 2021 winter pricing. February 2021 is when everything went pure nutty, and that's when it got to the peak. We're never going to see that again, at least probably not in our lifetimes or maybe in 20 or 30 years. It was a unicorn, a black swan event, whatever term that you want to use. Now, will things go back up again, slow and steady? Yes, probably. The correct items. How high will they get? I don't freaking know. When's the best time to buy them? I don't know. I can make some educated guesses. But the thing that's kind of hanging over all this is the macroeconomic factors, which, you know, Jeff touches on at the end of the video. To me, that's really going to dictate more than anything else. That the, the macroeconomic factors have more of an impact than what 2020 pricing was. Cool. It's good to go look back and see. I agree. Like, I like that as a, and I would take the same approach. When LeBron stuff gets back to, because that's what I'm looking at mostly when you talk about stuff on that level on the sports card side of things is LeBron stuff. I'm from Northeast Ohio. It's what we do. When I look at LeBron stuff that starts getting close to early 2020 pricing, my radar goes up. Do I think that's the bottom? I really don't know. Like I said, the macroeconomic picture is going to play a massive role in this. And that's another thing. Nobody knows how it's going to play out. If the economy tanks at the beginning of this year, we could blow through the 2024s. We could. I know Jeff gave, I was, the thing that shocked me the most about this was that Jeff gave specific numbers. Good on him. Uh, I mean, there's a decent chance that's going to show up on a sports card radio clip at some point in time uh, if they go underneath those numbers at all. He put himself out there giving specific numbers. Uh, it is what it is. He did it. He said it. We'll see how it plays out. But Jeff is probably the most polarizing figure in the hobby. So anything that he says is going to get picked apart. And he is well aware of that. I would imagine anyways. I don't know. And quite frankly, you guys as viewers should challenge us as content creators. If, if you say something you know, that we don't agree with or that you think is out of line or not out of line, but maybe just you're like, wait, what? That doesn't make any sense. Challenge us. Ask us to back it up with why we think the way that it is. You know, think think for your think for yourselves. You, you need to follow the people that you want to follow. Take their information, do your own research, and then apply it to whatever it is that you're thinking about doing. But back on topic here, you know, if the economy tanks, it's going to blow through the twenty nine the twenty twenty numbers. I think it really will. If the economy tanks, and that's the big unknown. If the economy holds, and we have the air quotes soft landing that everyone's talking, or a certain segment of people are talking about. And things get, you know, it's kind of whatever, and then slightly, slowly starts to get better. Maybe we get a little bit worse, and then things slowly start to creep back up again. And by the end of the year, beginning of 2024, uh, maybe everything's hunky-dory, and we're all happy spending money again. If that happens, then we probably are close to the floor. Maybe. If that happens, and the economy holds, and things are all sunshine and kittens and rainbows and unicorns, then are we probably getting close to the floor? Sure, I could 100% see that. I could see the case for it. I could see the argument for it. It it, it checks out. I, 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 can, I can wrap my brain around that and says, yes, this makes some sense. We're approaching pre-pandemic pricing. This is what this stuff was before the market got nutty. I can see that using that as floor values. It all makes sense to me. If the first three months of the year, we're talking about massive layoffs, food prices escalating, inflation still going out of control, credit card debt building up, all those sorts of things. 
all the buzzwords that you want to hit on, then sure, we could blow through those floors. You know, I, I forget, you know, Jordan no, will, will never, PSA 9 Jordan will never be under 10K again. He could be right. He could be wrong. Like I said, I think it depends more on the macroeconomics than it does anything in the sports card world, to be quite honest with you. Is it in Jeff Wilson's best interest if the market has it at the bottom? Yes. He runs a company that runs a data tool about sports cards. Of course it is. The more the market rebounds, the more things stabilize, the more things get back to semi-normal, the more people probably stay in the game because they're not seeing red on their My Collection tab uh, every day that they look at it. You start to see green, you get excited again, you buy more cards, you need to research more cards. It is what it is. So that's my take. Have we hit the bottom? Hell if I know. I could see the case for both sides of it. Like I said, I, I you almost need to keep an eye on the economy more than anything else. I mean, that's not real rocket science here, but if the economy stabilizes and starts to tick back up again, will sports cards follow? Sure, they could. Are they gonna go to 2021 prices again? No. If the economy tanks, are we gonna blow through those 2020 floors? Blow through them, I don't know. Go below them, probably. I do think, and this is something that Jeff talked about in his video, and I do agree. The, the one point that I really do agree with is the further that we get away from 2021 prices, the better off we all are. The more that that inventory kind of cycles through the system and people either wrap their mind around that this card is not going back to the price that I paid for it, or they sell it at a loss and it gets in someone news hands that has a lower point of entry on that card, I think the better off we all are. Uh, it's still a very frustrating experience to hear the words, well, I'm into it for this, so I can't let it go for less than X, and X is a price from March of 2021. And it's like, well, cool, then just, you know what? Wherever your will is, just go stick it in there, because you're taking it to the grave with you. It ain't, you're not going to sell it for a February, March 2021 price. You're not. If you're into a card for this section of the graph right here, regardless of the card, it's probably not ever going to get back to that price again. So just go ahead and not in your lifetime anyway, most likely. So just plan on taking that thing to the grave or sell it for what you can get for it today and use the money for something else or wrap your head around the fact that that loss is a loss and it ain't coming back. Whatever, whatever it takes for you to get to sleep at night. But the further we get away from this, I do believe the better off we will all be. The more that we put that in the rear view mirror. You know, remember it. Remember the lessons that we all learn from it. But the further we get away from those comps and that inventory cycles through, I do think sports cards in general will be in a much better place. So we'll see what 2023 brings. It should be an interesting year. I do think just generally speaking, and I've, I've talked about this in other videos for, you know, thoughts and predictions for this upcoming year. I, regardless whether you think things are going to go up or go down, I do feel like unless things get real, real bad in, in the economy, that prices will probably be more stable this year. You know, we just did all the sports recaps uh, and some of the ultra modern stuff was down 50, 60, 70 percent in some cases. I do feel like this time next year, that will not be the case. I don't think we see 70% drops on certain cards again. Could we? I could be completely wrong. Absolutely. Could we see 20% drops? Yeah. 30% drops? Yeah. I just don't think we see 70% drops on stuff. I think that part is behind us. Like that severe correction period is behind us so i think we see more normalized ups and downs once again i could be wrong that's just my thoughts on all this so that's all i have for you guys and girls today we will catch you on the next one peace